And there we go. We're recording. And uh, I'd like to say happy uh, Martin Luther King Day, or uh, however you want to observe it. Hopefully, it'll be a happy day. Uh, lots of things going out there. Hi, my name's Greg Claiborne. I am part of the three Black Pratt grads that you see here with uh, my friend Mark Skinner. Say hey, Mark. Hey. And my bud, uh, Ken Nelson. And uh, we all graduated from the Pratt Institute's uh, Fine Art Photography Program in Brooklyn, New York, and uh, Manhattan, Manhattan campus, but didn't take any classes there. Um, and uh, we get together from time to time, and uh, we talk about photography, still have the love for it. And uh, we've had our careers in, uh, had and are still having our careers in uh, photography, and love the medium, and uh, we're just uh, here to talk about it. Well, today, uh, in uh, deference to uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, I had the idea of uh, talking about vision. And uh, to quote uh, uh, a visionary and gangster from New Jersey, <laughs> Thomas Edison, he said, uh, vision without action is hallucination. And I really, really like that one because um, photography is all about vision, writing with light. And um, either you, you know, enjoy capturing what you see or you have the unique ability to um, create something visually through photography or through set set making or uh uh, any numerous, any numer any numerous ways of uh, capturing images or creating art, you can do that. Um, there was an extension to that that I, I that I in the notes that I wrote to the guy, to the fellows. What was that, Ken? Uh, vision is uh, uh, it's about action. Right. Yeah, it's waiting for a moment. But also, yeah, waiting for a moment or creating it. Having a great whiz bang camera, but shooting the ordinary or nothing with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's great. You know, we have these discussions about, um, you know, the latest, greatest cameras, which is wonderful. But, um, you know, I, I again, I would I would be just as happy, if not more so, using, a, you know, a, a, a $20, you know, off the shelf camera and capture a Pulitzer Prize image than, you know, having this great camera and then, you know, hustling and doing all of this and that or doing nothing with it. And that, that, that would uh, drive me up a while. But excuse me. <clears throat> um, be that as it may, uh, that's the premise, vision and uh, what, what you do with it. And uh, I'm going to kick it over to you, Mr. Nelson. What have you got for us today? OK, vision uh, for me. You got hallucination I... or you got this? <laughs> <laughs> no. <Sorry. laughs> To me, vision um, uh, comes after thought, <laughs> all right, okay. uh, because I have to think about what it is I want to visualize before I actually visualize physically what I'm what I've thought. And so I I pertain to this particular image because it it was a vision that happened or a, a thought that happened years ago. And uh, I have this habit of. You know, when I'm on the bus or subway, I have ideas and I write those ideas down <clears throat> and I refer back to those ideas at times throughout life. <clears throat> and because I know that at some point in time, I might use this thought. So this particular image came about as an idea uh, where I was photographing at a low angle. Now, of course, we all at some point in time see seen images from a low angle. But do you shoot all of your images from a low angle? Or do you just shoot a small percentage of your images from a low angle? Or if you shoot any images at all? So mm -hmm. the premise for me was to shoot a great deal of images from a low angle, right? More than that, more than usual. And to present these images as they are real, but to present these images as equivalent to being photographed at what would be considered a regular height. And the intent was, of course, to exaggerate the the scale the scale of humanity within where they are and so this particular image came about as part of that process and in the last um, I'd say year and a half uh, I've been steadily working on this project and uh, some of the images this is happens to be one of the images that I selected uh, and I think I've got I, I've got literally thousands of images just for this particular project now um, of course they're not. I 
You go ahead, Greg. You had it. To- I, I I like it. It's kind of spooky. And again, you know, you're you're uh, <clears throat> excuse me. You're exploring the frame, you know, and New York never never disappoints. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you apply yourself to you know capturing image, you can you can really really work the frame in here, and it it looks like very surrealistic, and it looks like like it's morphing. I've been watching The Witcher lately. So. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm seeing a lot of bizarre creatures and whatnot, and and he's like half human, half ghost, and and the monumental size and the angle. Yeah, you know, it's it's normal if you're an ant or something, but it's cool perspective and it's a way to work the frame and uh you know look for a different way to see which is yeah. which is which is all what for me that's what photography is about so yeah. go ahead sorry sorry so the idea definitely so the thought comes the idea happens and i don't necessarily execute the thought the the i the the, the work about the thought can happen years later it can mm-hmm. happen immediately yeah it can happen years later i agree and, i think this and, is a wonderful photo yeah, yeah. I think, and I think so like the yeah planting seeds yeah and so you have ideas about working it out uh some of it has to do with the ability the technical ability to execute the image uh because i i was i had the idea for the project when i was shooting film uh and film 100 percent of the time and the ability to execute this particular project is easier to do with digital than with film may mm-hmm. may i ask what the type of camera was used for this particular image, and is this the full frame? This is the full frame, and I, I'm shooting with my digital camera, the Leica M10, with a wide-angle lens on it. And the camera is just sitting on the ground on a mini tripod. It's about one what's, or two inches from the wide, What's wide for the M10? Uh, well, well my, the one I'm using on this one is a 28. That's the widest I have. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it's a great photo. I think I think I think it's really, really good. Um, you said it's a series. Yeah. Um, I would have to see a series before I could say that. Oh wow, I'd like to see more of these. He showed, he but showed I think some other ones before. But, I, or you yeah, have been posting some. I, I, I think so out of, cool. I think this is really to me one of the most successful. I think this says all of what that forced perspective says mm-hmm. you know i think other than that you you know be, be would be belaboring the idea i think everyone should have you know maybe one in their canon of, of, of their body of work um this is the best one i've seen thus far uh from you i'm sure you've got more that you like more or just as much but, but this is really good i don't i do um, I don't. Uh, some of the others I wouldn't say are as good as this to me. Okay, that's cool. Mm-hmm. That's granted. That's granted. Okay. Yeah. In order to I expedite like time, <laughs> let's let's let's. Um. That's all I got for this Move one. Let's along. move on. Yeah. All right. Oh, that's all you have to show, Ken. Yeah, that's all I have to show. That's that one okay. image, and that one idea. All right. Then, uh, so I'm sure Mark will be. Uh, Mark will be quicker because he's got nothing to show. I'll be- I mean, vision. <clears throat> so for for a project for for a topic entitled vision, you have no vision. Yeah, one of the things that I wanted to <laughs> say was that with uh, vision, one of the things with thought, with great power well, comes thought, great I responsibility. Personal, no, I, I thought about I thought about personal <laughs> vision, and I think for me, I felt that I talk about my personal vision with every one of these conversations. You know, I talk about my personal vision with every genre. So I kind of wanted to talk what about. What else would you talk about? Well, what I wanted to talk about, the idea of people who were visionaries and who had vision for advancement of photographic craft. You know, we don't really talk a lot about craft. And, you know, you talk um, uh, about, you know... talk about craft every week. Well, not to the same extent. I mean, to me, uh, someone like Harold uh, Edgerton, you Mm -hmm. know, is a visionary who has vision. I mean, Mm -hmm. here's a guy who recognizes, you know, he sees Moybridge's... Uh, photographs of all the, the 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 individual photographs that make up what would be a, a motion picture uh, sequence, you know. And so by 1937, he's an MIT engineer, and he's developing the strobe, you know. And so he discovers that if he uses, you know, the photographic, you know, this this burst of light, he can stop motion, which is really kind of what the photograph is supposed to be. 
I mean, just by just doing this one act, he can, you know, stop a hummingbird in flight. I mean, you showed a, bird, a photograph of a hummingbird. And that strobe gives you that instance. You know, and like a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the idea that there was a, you know, that every instance has a secret in it. I mean, mm-hmm. if, I, if I move my hand like this, mm-hmm. right? It's, it, I'm doing this, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm moving it from here to here. But in a photograph, once that strobe goes off and it synchronizes with the, with the uh, shutter, the aperture, that moment is captured as a, a type of illustration uh, that can only be delineated by a lens. And, you know, for I all disagree, people, but go ahead. You disagree? Go ahead. Finish, finish no, no, your I idea, mean, then I want to. It's a conversation. I don't have to speak, make a speech. It's just, in what way? Why, why, do you, why do you disagree? No, I mean, all the way back from uh, when it was just a camera, camera obscura, right. you know, where you had a tent with the pinhole in it, and, it, and you, the light projected the reversed image on the other side of the tent. Right. You didn't need a strobe to do that, but to, no, to make you're a not still, instance, you're, you're capturing. Yeah, but you can draw it from there, scene. almost like a tracing. You could, right. But I mean, that the that's great. I'm not taking anything away from the creation of the strobe, but I mean, the vision it took to say, oh, how how do I stop acting? Because you could use the strobe to take a completely inane image. But the scientific uh, stopping the image and getting the galloping horse a la Moy Bridge, you know, for a motion study, you know, or the precursor to a motion picture or whatever. OK, you know, uh, but to say that it's the be all end all, I don't I don't I'm not, I don't think that's what you're saying, but I think it's just as valid as as, you know, having a, a pinhole in a tent. For the uh, you know camera, I, I think I, I think that vision. I think there are individuals who approach uh, photography. You know, photography is kind of like this blend between art and science, right? I mean, there's a lot of you know pre- prior to digital, is all this chemistry and physics that you had to understand and math to really create a photograph. I mean, sure, you could just sort of throw your camera in front of your eye and take a picture, but whether you were aware of it or not, there's a lot of chemistry and mathematics that went on in an analog photograph. Fast forward to today, you still have a lot of the physics uh, and you also have different types of physics where the photons affect, uh, you know, a type of cell. And, and in between, you've got the science of light, whether it's LED lights, which people use now, strobes, which covered like the last half century of, of uh you know, of, of high level photography, or of course the sun, you know, there's a lot of science that goes into it. And there are visionaries within each field. You talked about Edison, you know, he created the light bulb, right? Which made it possible for people to photograph at night. He created- mm, Well, not completely. Mariah. Well, but he created the, the Black Mariah uh, film studio that's in uh, Menlo Park, New Jersey. You know, he yeah, that's why he box. created Hollywood because he was blackmailing everybody to use his camera or else. And oh, he yeah. Goon squad and bust up their equipment, so they left. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, this one was it, no, was yeah. no, uh, well, what do they call They call no him the Wizard of Menlo thing. Park, and you're, 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 you're implying he's the Grand Wizard of Menlo Park, but that's a different yeah, thing. No, I didn't say Grand Wizard. I but said it, he's a know, thug. The, the, the thing that, uh, really interesting is that he, uh, creates this movie studio where you open up the skylights to create uh, pretty much a channeled light. But I just felt that vision in this particular case to me, uh, because we talked briefly about Edison before, the, the idea that it, someone could create an instant, uh, in a way to uh, create an instance of light uh, in a repeatable fashion. You know, before they had okay. they had the magnesium, you know, powder that they could light to create the flash of light. So it's not an entirely new idea, but to be able to repeat this consistently to create that's a, that's a big deal, and 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 a good amount of yeah. it is done today. Uh, if it's not done with daylight only, a lot of it is still done with you know the strobe. 
No, I, I'm not. I'm not discounting that. What I'm talking about is vision, not necessarily the mechanics of it, but the vision a vi that a visual artist would use. That would be the difference between a Punch and Judy or a Muppets box theater, as opposed to like a Broadway show with makeup artists, right, like right, highly right. talented right. people right. who can see something in their mind and right. say, "How do I create that in the real world?" and then capture it right. on camera. But it was really like your a Cindy photo. Sherman and her movie stills. It was your photo of a hummingbird that really kind of reminds me of this idea. It's, you know, the hummingbird. I mean, they even said when I read up on what Edgerton did is he created the strobes so that he could, you know, create the uh, images and stop the hummingbird's wing <laughs> in flight, you know, on an image. It's so amazing. It's speeding so fast, yeah. Yeah. But they also did uh, like a shutter, shutter, higher, faster and faster shutters. So that right. they could do that also, right? I mean, but but doesn't mean that he and now they have it built but, into but, your iPhone, you know, where you can right. Think. But his intention, right? We always talk about intention was to make the to make the invisible seen, right, or to make the unseen seen in that particular By stopping case. motion, okay, right? And 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 that's really it. and that's what he did. If you look at, I think it's the the uh, art. Is it the art, the Institute of the Arts, Chicago Museum, I think they have on their website, um, or is it the art? Yeah, I think it's the Institute of the Arts, Chicago. I think they actually have uh, many of his photographs. Anyway, it's Harold uh, Edgerton, and you can find, you know, the, the, the crown of water, of milk that's created by the droplet, the bullet going through the balloon. We've seen those photographs, the golfer. Mm -hmm. The golf swing that was in the encyclopedias when we were kids. That that's all the kind of work that, that he did. So mm -hmm. I you know, I thought that was pretty visionary. And I thought that in, in in the definition that you provided for this prompt, I said that that was a type of vision that we hadn't discussed before. Was you know, I think Kent mentioned the inventors really early in the beginning, but I think that was one that he didn't cover. And so I just figured, okay, that's the type we of could vision. have shown some of those images. I would have made it. Really interesting. Well, anyway, I want to have a real conversation well, is, rather yeah. than just go, you know, this is that picture. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, I mean, visually, I think it's important, you know, because those were groundbreaking images, you know, stop action yeah. and, and such, yeah. you know, and with the mechanics, sheer mechanics of, of light and just shutter. Okay. Anything yeah. else? What do you got, Ken? No, I'm just saying for brevity, let's, um, let's move on. Let's, let's move it right <laughs> along. All right. Uh, so for mine, what have I got up first? I, I totally forgot. What we, I get caught up in in uh, this conversation. <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah. You know, I I I've always had a you know soft spot in my heart for uh, street vendors, and uh, you know when I went on my vacay and saw these street vendors out there, I just had to get it. You know, that was that was my vision wasn't necessarily street vendors but uh it's something that i don't see uh stateside like this so i wanted to be sure that um i was able to capture what i envisioned of these uh, street vendors and uh i went out to capture that so in a way that was my vision but it was something that uh i wouldn't say a precognition or the creative end of it but i wanted to fill the frame with color and fruit and 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 uh the vendors that did that go ahead on to the next one <clears throat> excuse me um similar you know but you know shot from a different angle and uh it, it just it, just the perspective of it kind of changes the look and feel of the image and uh, I like the previous one because it seemed like it was more open and appealing and coming at you. And the fruit seemed uh, more lively and uh, she was more attentive to the action that was coming at me, just like all the fruit and the vegetables and everything was to her and me. I felt that that connection there. So uh, depending on, you know, the basics of uh, design, you know, and imagery and all of that, uh, the art stuff. You know, composition is key. Uh, interaction is key. All of the minor elements that make a photograph or a painting stronger and fuller and richer, in my opinion. Okay, go on to the next one. 
I did have one of uh, an older gentleman sitting on a bus <laughs> with a with the boom box attached to his ear. His eyes were closed and he had this big smile on his face. You know, it wasn't intentionally caught, but it was like a kind of a visual cliche, you know, a person enjoying sound and music and just in their own little world. But um, uh, I chose not to use that one. But this one I thought was, you know, uh, again, back down in the uh, on VK, the tropics, the idea of uh, Coke and C. <laughs> we all know it's <laughs> Pepsi. Mm -hmm. But you know, both of them on the same on the same uh, sign, it's like you know, basically it's just just like about ten percent difference in uh, food flavoring it, but it's all just bubbles and sugar. <laughs> but uh, I just got a kick out of um, you know uh, being you know, it's just a street sign. You'd walk past it. You know, and, so and that, that that Pepsi sign is that's as it appeared uh, based on this rendering. It's it's not uh, black and white. It's not post. It's not what? Uh, the the black, the and, black white. and white vision it's, of the Pepsi sign was that created in post or is that no 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 that's, 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 that's just the way it was. It was in shadow. If you see how the light is and you, the white, the the Coke sign is so well lit because of the reflection of the white. Right. But I mean, they're look, they're all so weathered. You know, they may be brightly colored all around it, bright blue tropical sky and palm trees and. But they were weathered. They had been out there for so long, they were both losing their color. It was a Coke red. It's, it's poppy, bright red, like this red behind me. But uh, it was just weathered, you know? I loved that the white paint was peeling and rusting. Very nice capture. It just had such texture. And, you know, visually, my eye was, like, drawn to it. And I, just, I was, like, just enjoying all of that. And uh, what is it? Uh, scopophilia. You know, I know well, that's a that's a really good capture, Greg, because I can say that I there's a good chance I might not have seen that one. Seen what? The the signs juxtaposed like that, and that one was in color, and the other one was in black and white. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying now. I didn't I didn't even think to to because it for me that well, okay, yeah, it does look kind of in the grayscale, the Pepsi one. Yeah, but it was so worn. I mean so worn that that doesn't even do it any justice uh i don't know maybe it does maybe on a bigger screen <laughs> but uh the, the colors were just worn off it, it's the craziest thing like uh the tropicals like uh like hawaii or you know it'll rain like super hard for about 30 seconds and then disappear you won't even see the cloud that brought that brought it and uh it just wears everything down. It was, it was, uh, all right, moving right along. <laughs> Thank you. But you know what I like about this photo? I really love about that photo, the previous one, that there's like, it's got, it's got, you know, and I don't mean to say nothing, it's got nothing in it, but it's got everything at the same time. You can tell it's someplace really warm. It's got the palm trees. Like you said, it's someplace where the, the wind and most likely the sea beat on those, those things all the time. It's really weathered. And, you know, it's, it's very tactile. You kept talking about texture, uh, and, it's, and it really is a texture study. It's about the texture of the of the wall, the texture of the other wall, the texture of the pole, the texture of the signs, the texture of the palm trees. It, it's it's the it's just really uh, a really nice assemblage of different textures photographed. No, I mean, the, and then you get the duality of the word vision. You know, it's vision seeing the unseen or vision seeing what you see you know being able to see it you know that's, that sounds stupid but like you said that that might have been something that you would have walked past you know it's like so what a couple of old signs next <laughs> you know but for me you know you, you don't see coke and pepsi so, you know advertisements together i get it can move them right along okay so this one it's very similar um similar and idea you know you have the all the elements of the you know uh painting somebody i was like oh my god i thought that was a painting oh, well thank you yeah, but that's the classical training and you get the color in the sky the trees and the way the boats are kind of lying and nobody around so you got this painterly ethos but going to the next one um for me you know like i was having this uh you know because i'm having my you know mental health awareness month thing going on and uh something that can be very you know aesthetically pleasing like the image before that can be you know with without much digital effort could be just uh i would say perverted but it could be changed into something that's 
for me, it was uh, kind of nightmarish, you know, because I was looking at the image before that and I was like, wow, look at that. It's so idyllic. Then to the left, you know, it's like poverty and, you know, people having challenges or doing the best they can. And to the right, it's, you know, boats that will never sail again, you know, so. And then in me, there's, you know, uh, a lot of, you know, uh, emotional turmoil and all of these things going on. And I'm like, wow, where, where's the truth in imagery here? So you know, are you saying this is a what am I... image or is this a capture? Uh, this is a manipulated image. But for me, you know, feeling closer to my nightmares than to this idyllic thing where visually, like the idea for this topic, where it's like... Uh, vision is is that the truth or truth and imaging or is that what you want to you know because you want to capture a postcard you want to capture these painterly images is that the reality that you want to capture or is this more reality is it is is life you know or what i'm seeing more nightmarish than idyllic you know so that's what uh some somebody commented and said you know hey Capturing sharing beauty is an important thing. Uh, he, he also had this uh, Navajo, I think it was like a Navajo quote about cap seeing and capturing and sharing beauty was more important than, you know, than not. And uh, I'll probably just leave that there. Any comments again, or we can wrap this up? No, I'm good. Did you guys? Okay, all right. You, anything, Mr. Mr. Skinner? No, I. No, right. <clears throat> No, okay. Well, that's it for this episode of Vision. You know, get out. Please, please, please grab your camera, whatever visual medium that you choose, get out there and shoot, you know, explore the frame, uh, explore your thoughts. Like Ken. Ken is a highly creative technical guy and uh, he'll come up with an idea. It's like, huh, how do I how do I capture that? You know, challenge yourself. The camera never disappoints. It, it it'll go as far as you can and then some. So uh, keep shooting. Keep uh, blowing your image, get in the group and talk about photography. And uh, yep, that's it. That's is that the uh, oh he oh did you see that Ken? Did you see him? He did that and uh, he yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> vision, you know, uh, what, what did I say? I, without action, vision without action is is hallucination. So don't hallucinate. Get out there and shoot. That's all I got. I'm Greg Clanker. This is my buddy Mark Skinner. And this is Nelson over there in the corner. And uh, I want to say thanks for joining us on uh, Three Black Pratt Grads. Join us next time. Please subscribe and uh, ring the bell so you know when we post a new one. Tell your friends about it.